Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to be working on a Daiwa first uh, generation black gold reel. And it's the black gold 90. I actually have two of these. I have the BG90s. They're both in beautiful condition, but they're kind of the, the tail of two reels here. One of them, well, it's just turning slow. That's the one I'm going to work on. I think we're just grease choked here. The other one, well, for whatever reason happens with these, uh, I get a wobble. A rotor wobble. I believe it has to do with balance. In this case, the bale may be off just a little bit, but this is typically what I find with these. You'll see it's got kind of a wobble to it, and I just don't know what causes that, but it seems on these big first generation uh, BG reels that happens. And uh, well, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the other one that's not working very well. This one, I believe it's grease choked. I'm going to take this one apart. We're going to show you how to service it, how it's made, and why it has the reputation that it does. Again, it's just kind of hard to, to crank, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll certainly work on that one over time, and we'll all learn from it. Uh, we're going to start by taking off this reel, and, and because it has a cap here that's screwed in, sometimes we can make the mistake of thinking this is a, a reel that you're going to turn the handle and uh, remove the screw, but it's not. It's a reel where Daiwa has put a screw into a through shaft that uh, goes right through the main gear. So if you were trying to turn this one in a counterclockwise or a clockwise manner to remove this one, well, you could break that uh, handle shaft or worse, you can break the main gear. So I would encourage you, if you don't know the reel, always check under that, that uh, little cap there before you uh, go any further. This really is almost looks brand new. There's a lot of dust and debris on it. I, I got it from a private seller. I got the two of them from a private seller. And actually the price was good because the first one was wobbling. I said, I don't know if this one's going to wobble as well because this one doesn't uh, need service, right? So uh, we negotiated a pretty good price between the two of them. All right, with this off, we can remove the handle. Just simply pull it out. What I like to do is take that screw just put it right back into the handle. That way I won't lose it. And as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please use that notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting. And that uh, well, you can see what it is that I'm posting about. I work on all kinds of reels. I show a lot of the service and repair videos on those reels. I also discuss the fishing business, the manufacturer, the, the histories behind these reels, and so on. So there's a lot to learn here. That's my my goal of this channel is to teach. And in some cases, it's to teach you how to service the reel itself. And in other cases, it's just to transfer some knowledge that I may have gained over time in terms of the reel histories, the manufacturers, when the reels were made. Just things that are also of interest to anybody servicing the reels or just looking to learn more about them. All right, we'll service this one later. We have removed the adjuster and the cap. And I always recommend when you are working on fishing reels, have a strategy for what you're going to do with your parts. In this case, I use a parts tray and uh, that enables me to kind of segregate out the parts as I remove them and know where they are when it's time to reinstall them. A lot of people have different strategies about what to do with the parts. Some like to lay out a uh, towel on their workbench and put the parts off back on uh, in a line in the order that they remove them. And it's kind of like a first off, last on kind of thing, right? And uh, you work down the line to take them all off, work back from the line to put them back in. And that's uh, good. I want to encourage you, whatever selection you make, uh, make sure that uh, you have that system before you start removing the parts. I took the three screws off and the first thing I wanted to note is are they the same length? And they are, so I just put them into a corner of the box. This is time for the great reveal, if you will. Here's what's underneath the reel. We have a metal side plate, a big gear, bearings, dirt, but otherwise a, a reel that's in relatively good condition. But it's that old grease that's slowing the performance of this reel down. I'm going to remove the axle shaft now by removing the cross-line block screw. 
holding the cross line block and now pulling up on the axle shaft. That axle shaft came out nice and easy. That's what you would hope. Sometimes when you get a stuck reel like this, you come to find out that you have a bent axle shaft. And on a reel like this, you're not going to find it easily as a replacement part if you find it at all. So just uh, be aware of that. Also notice that we have a little notch here. When we go to reinstall, the flat side is going to face us and the notch is going to face kind of that way as it goes back in. And the screw that we just removed from the cross line block, actually part of that is going to nest in that little area there. We've taken the axle shaft off. We should now be able to remove the main gear. That bearing off. Well, the other, the other bearing is stuck on here, so we're going to and I have to work around that to get that unstuck. I'm going to take off the cross wine block next. And hopefully we can get to this screw here for the um, oscillation gear. And we can. Now this one has an oscillation gear that's held in by a screw. A lot of, a lot of these do not. Now the whole thing can come out. You can see how it got stuck there with that uh, bearing. All right. What I like to do with these as I take them off is to clean them. I'm going to take a paper towel and put that under here to protect my work surface. And I'm just going to use some penetrating oil to loosen up that old grease. And then we can wipe it down. When you go to clean your parts, just use the least abrasive approach. If you can clean it with just uh, something as simple as a paper towel, then go ahead and do that. And if you need something more aggressive, then uh, try like a kitchen scrubby, uh, a hard brush. This is a hard brush, like a toothbrush. And I'm pulling the old grease through here. And it seems like that's what the cause of this is, just a lot of old coagulated grease in the channels here. So clean them up good, and then they go into the parts tray. Here with this one. Now the grease on this side doesn't mean anything to anybody. It doesn't lubricate anything. There's nothing there to lubricate. The important part of this is the this side, the flat side, and the channel here with the groove. That's what's where the moving parts are. So just clean that up, put that in a parts tray, keep that screw for the unwind. This is a uh, rubber sealed on the one side and uh, metal sealed on the other jacket. Test it. If you find any roughness in it at all, then it will need to be replaced. That one's just doing fine. We're going to put some fishing wheel oil onto the bearing. Just set that aside. It's a shielded bearing, so it will work itself free. Speaking of working itself free, we got this bearing off. A little bit of old grease in there. Maybe that's part of what was trapping it. I'm going to use a cotton swab to get in there and pull that old grease out. We'll do the same thing. Test it, put it between your two fingers and roll it. And again, if you feel any roughness or, or out of balance to it, then go ahead and replace those bearings. They're not that expensive. Well, you can see one of the issues here, all of the grease from this reel is shellacked, which means it hasn't been used in a very long time. This is gravity. This reel was probably sitting like this because there is no grease on this side and a whole puddle of grease down here that's varnished. So it was probably sitting in a rod rack with the uh, reel hanging down, suspended from it. And what we want to do is just clean that old stuff up. Do the same thing. I'm going to use a penetrating oil and a cotton swab, see if we can't get it out that way. Yeah, for the most part, it works good. And we'll do the same thing we did here with that oscillation gear. Pull it out with that first, and use your hard brush. And here's where you see the paper towel. I pull the old grease out from the teeth and I want it on that paper towel as opposed to being on my bench where it can get transferred to another project. All right. Nice clean reel. Check the orientation of all of the teeth. They're in good condition. Same thing with the back drive. Check that. And then check the points on the teeth. This way, make sure your gear is not warped. Now that condition that we had, it could have been a warped gear. As it moves in and out, it could bind. I'm just thinking it's the old grease. 
for it to clean the main gear. There is a shim washer on here. There's actually two shim washers on here. So be aware of those as you uh, reassemble the reel. Know that they belong there. Okay, that's good. We'll put that into the case. We'll come up top here and service the, the top end of this reel. There's a hold fast screw here we'll remove. And again, I like to keep these sub-assemblies nearby in my parts tray. So I'll take that, not only that screw, but the cap that goes with it. Looks like we have old grease on this uh, nut here. And then we'll find the appropriate uh, wrench to pull that off. It's a 14 millimeter. Once you break that nut, you can take it off by hand. Find a part in the tray for that. And we should be able to remove the rotor assembly. Now this appears to be a manual bail, and why I say that is there's no trip lever mechanism that comes in on this side here. So I'm thinking this is the manual bail that's going to ram against the side of this plate here. That's going to knock it back, so it'll come over here We'll show you on a reel. It'll come over here, it'll hit it and flip it back. A lot of the manufacturers today have actually gone to manual bales where you don't even hit that back post. It's simply a, uh, you flip it back yourself and that to me is a good practice. Almost all of the, the spin fishing I do, I never rely on a uh, internal bale trip unless, uh, unless it's like a, a Mitchell 300 or something where you can't flip it back manually. All right, I've oiled the arm seam and as long as this is clicking back nice and easy you do not need to remove that bail. Right, let's just take a look at what we have here now. So this is an eccentric driven anti-reverse dog. You can see the little wire that's coming through it and I'm going to just lift up on that eccentric. That's the way that it will go like the number seven. Put that in the base and I think I actually probably have to remove, uh, I think I can slip it over. Remove the ratchet. Note, when you take the ratchet off, which way the, the slots are facing. You can put it back this way and it simply won't work. So you need to put it back correctly. Leave that off to the side for a moment. This is your spacer. It simply pulls up and off. And now we have three screws. Now if you needed to get into this dog, you can remove that. I, I'm not being lazy about it. It doesn't need to be removed. So I'm just uh, scooting the issue if I can. I do that same thing with some other reels that are around. Pen Spin Fisher, which this one would have competed against, has a similar setup. All right. Once I loosen those initial ties here, all right, my guess is this reel's probably never been serviced. Looking at the age of the reel, the, the varnish of the uh, greases, and how these screws are set. These have probably never come out. One more here. Let's see if we can get this one off. Take a picture here. This is not a symmetrical collar. So you want to know how that collar is going to lay when it's time to reinstall. You'll see that we have three screws there and a pointed area down here. Make sure when you go to reinstall that's the way that it lays. That right over there with that other clip. My three screws and put that right inside that big one there so I don't get lost. And now we should be able to pull this assembly out. Now that was easy. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. We want to remove the bearing. We want to clean our pinion gear. One of the things you can see with the BG is well deserved the reputation here. These are high quality uh, materials used in the reel. And today they use the same. They're right, the different um, alloys, but they're all very good, very well designed and uh, made reels. All right, I'm going to use a pick now to pull through here. Some of that old grease, I believe this is where the reel has bogged down. The old grease in this 
here cause the slow sluggishness, if you will, as I had to grind over that in order to uh, mesh and turn the rotor as you were cranking the wheel. Okay, I think we pretty much got that up. I'm going to spray that down with the penetrating oil. In this case, I'm using WD-40, but I really don't care which penetrating oil I use. And it pretty much is used as a degreaser for cleaning. All right, nice, nice looking homemade wheel. I don't know if that's stainless or not. It sure kind of looks like it, but that doesn't mean it is. All right, that's all clean. That'll go into my case. Do the same thing here with the bearing. I want to test this bearing. Yep, runs nice and free and easy. And grab my fishing reel oil again. And if I didn't mention it before, if you have a question on this reel, just leave it in the comment section. I do try to answer those questions. And, uh, well, if you have a question on any reel, it doesn't have to be this one. If you want to do the same, I, uh, you can leave that in the comment section here. They all uh, group together when it's um, in the morning when I go in to search my comment section on the videos. And I do try to answer those questions for you in the morning. So. If you have a question, you want to know the age, maybe you want to know the, um, the histories, whatever, certain reels. If you have a reel as, that you have as a child, you want to know a little bit more about them. I just leave them there. I try to, again, try to answer those questions for you. And then not always on the mechanics behind it. Of course, if you're stuck on a reel and you need an assist, I'll try. I can't guarantee I'll help solve your issue but maybe I'll get you pointed in the right direction. All right. You can see from this case there's virtually no wear inside or outside of the case. And again, the telltale point here seems to be that it's just old dried grease. One little piece here. And then you want to be particular about this. You do want to get that old grease out of here because well if that's what was jamming the teeth in the reel the first time if it starts to flake off, it'll jam it again, and you know, you will have wasted a lot of time in your uh, attempted servicing of the wheel. All right, we're in good condition with this one now. Let's go ahead and start putting it back together then. It is, as I mentioned, somewhat of a reverse process. Last off, first in. So let's take that pinning gear. I'm, I'll be interested to see if I have the bail wobble with this one, or the rotor wobble, or whatever we want to call it. There's usually counterweights in these reels that offset that kind of thing, but from time to time, the engineers don't get it right. And it seemed that this first generation of the 90 size reels, for whatever reason, just always had that wobble. Doesn't make them a bad reel, just know that if you got one, and that's the way they run. All right, we've oiled the bearing. I'm going to put that back on. Take the pinion gear and the bearing assembly and bring that in. There is a hole in this support here. Make sure that you get that in. Make sure that your bearing is flat or flush to the top. Bring your collar over. Remember what we said about how that goes. And then we can take the three screws and we can start putting those back in. I put a little dab of grease to hold that screw as I get it started. And those of you that know me and know the channel know that me and these little guys don't play well together all the time. So if you want to Stop for a moment, go get yourself your beverage of choice and join me. I don't fast forward anything when I do these videos, so if this takes me a minute or two, you have a chance to take a break. All right, I'm going to make sure that I have the next two up. The first one seems to be the more difficult of them because you've got a floating plate there. Hmm. 
Do that little grease trick again. And one more coming up. I didn't tighten that first one down fully because I needed to know that I had a little bit of play in the alignment for that plate. Now that I got the two in, you can go tighten that down. And then this third one is just the, the middle screw here. Sometimes when you're doing this for the camera, you, you lose your view. All right, this is the third one here. Next, we're going to take the take our little spacer. I'm going to work this over. This has got a square, and there's a square on top of the spacer. Is it that little tag there? Make sure that you just flip it under that tag. You don't want to bend that tag there. And we have our eccentric, and as we said, that hook side looks like the number seven. Bring that in, make sure it is in the space there. Then we can take our rotor. Bring the rotor back on, rotor nut, and I like to thread these using a hand start, and tightening it down as much as I can, that way I can most assuredly not cross strip it. Right. No gears in there but that, spin it that nothing's hanging up before you install the tie down. This one has a shallow ridge on the bowl so you can use an open end wrench on this one. Some you can. And then we have the tie down screw goes next. So I think that there's actually a balance issue with the way that the rotors were designed. As I mentioned I've had a lot of these over the years. This one, uh, well, as I mentioned, I uh, found a fellow that had both of them and I was able to get a decent deal on them because, well, the one uh, kind of has the wobble and the other one, well, this one wasn't functioning very well at all, so. And I was told they hadn't been fished in some time. The fellow was straightforward and giving me a little bit about the history. He said he had the reels for at least 20 years. I think these reels were probably the 1990s, I'm going to guess. So we're looking at some fine equipment from a long time ago. All right, I'm using fishing reel grease again. In this case, it's pen precision reel grease. I've creased up the main gear. Before I put that on, I want to make sure that I can put the oscillation gear. This one seems to be aluminum. a good amount of grease on there. I use an artist's brush. That artist's brush uh, enables me to put that on without uh, worrying about hairs tearing off or getting trapped in the, the pieces. Some folks use paint uh, plumbers flux brushes and other things. My preference is an artist's brush. Okay, that's it. Now we can install The oscillation slide or cross wind block, whatever you like to call it. Make sure when you do this, the stud on the gear is all the way down low, like that. That'll give you the clearance to install your axle shaft. A little bit of grease onto the side that's going to go through the bearing. We noticed when we took that off that it, it stuck a little bit. Put the bearing on this side too while we're at it. On your axle shaft, just a light coating of grease. There is a hole in the pinion gear here that, well, it's going to scrape off any excess. If you get a little sloppy flat side forward, notch facing you. Bring it down and make sure that it's seated and that 
you have access to the screw hole. First up, we want to tie that down. And it looks like when I push that axle shaft through, there must have been a little bit of old grease, either in that cross wind block or in that uh, pinion gear slot. So there you go. All right, bring our case over. Put that case on, make sure you have a nice flat seam all the way around. So this one's got an up top, under the rotor, anti-reverse dog. It's controlled by an override down below here. This one's not a constant click. This one is eccentric driven, which means that it's going to be quiet until you need to engage it, at which point it's going to stop it back and help it engage. Some of the older ones, like the 7000 series, had a constant click. 7000C, the silver series of this reel. And you either loved or hated them. If uh, you were fishing with somebody and he kept getting the clicks because he was bringing in fish, I guess you hated them. But uh, it's all by design which way they go. All right. Tighten the three side plate screws down. Make sure they're nice and tight because on a boat, these uh, reels will have a tendency to have those screws loosen on them from the boat vibration. It's a perfect reel for surf. And we know that this is an older reel because the handle is a rosewood handle and rosewood is no longer allowed to be used. It's a banned uh, product from a conservation standpoint. So if you find a reel with a rosewood handle, it predates those uh, restrictions on the use of that wood. It was part of the rainforest devastation. All right, put that back on. Put this back on, the cap. Make sure you don't cross-thread this, because if you do, you're probably going to be uh, fishing with just an exposed screw. We'll set that off to the side for a moment. We'll come over here and service the drags. If I remember, we always have some issues with drags, but I believe if you need drag washers in this one, uh, the Penn Long Beach Model 60 drag washer actually works in here. So you remember at one point I had to do that. I couldn't find them anywhere. These I just expect to be stuck. This is a traditional six washer system. And these are Teflon washers, so you won't need to do anything with them, but clean them up. And interestingly enough, you can use that penetrating oil to wipe off the old grease with that as well. Teflon is non-porous, so all you have to do is make sure that they're clean. This has a setup that's a traditional six washer setup. It has two washers with rectangles in the middle. Those are called keyed washers. It has one washer that has two studs on it and a circle in the middle. That is called an eared washer. Kind of looks like an ear on the face. The rectangular go high and low and the eared washer goes in the middle. Before you reinstall the cleaned washers, clean out the, the bowl. I know we started by kind of cleaning that up. We had a beautiful metal on that. All right, we alternate. It's a Teflon washer, one of the keyed washers. Teflon washer, the eared washer with the two points, and they go in the slots in the spool there. Teflon washer, second rectangular washer. I'm trying to line that to match the other one. Makes it easier when you load the spool on. I'm not having any luck. I just have to work it in. And then our clip, there's a groove in, the, in here that the clip rides in. Hold that clip because it can't shoot if you're not careful. Okay. I forgot to mention before, this is a reversible handle. So if you want to drive this reel from the right side, just undo it and switch it around and bring it back. There is a shim washer underneath here, and you could put a drop of oil onto the bait alarm uh, spring back there. 
That's when your reel is going backwards, pulling out drag this way. Okay, let's give it the test then. <laughs> Two things I noticed right away. It turns free and easy. It's a beautiful reel and the classic BG90 upper end wobble. Well, there you go. Now, I've been told, I haven't noticed it. I gotta, I gotta notice it a little bit more. When the line is here and you're not cranking crazy like this, it's less noticeable, but uh, to me, I've always noticed it. All right, let's take the bail again. It's gonna come over here. It's gonna hit the top of the rail and snap it back. Now, I don't like that. So when I fish it, I bring it over, I cast the reel, and I bring it back manually. It saves a lot of wear and tear on the bail, and well, I just don't like it banging like that. Well, there you have it. That's your BG90. This one's a beautiful survivor, as is the other one. This one will get to service in a couple of uh, minutes after the videos are done, and it'll look just like that. I'll have a pair of them that we can put on the poles, take them fishing. All right. Also needed to check on the anti-reverse. That's good. Anti-reverse override is off. Now it's on. Very good. I hope you've enjoyed that. Before I leave, I want to thank our first responders, our police, fire, safety, rescue, and everybody who's dedicated to keeping us out of harm's way. I want to thank all of our viewers who've been watching and staying with me for as long as you have on this service. And I want to wish everybody a great days on the water best friends in the fishing uh, community, and a great day all around. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing you a good day. Thanks for watching.